So here is a video of our haunted garage. This is our third year of doing it. We did something a little different this year. We actually made a maze progression through the garage. This is a behind the scenes video. I'm gonna take you through what we did this year. So each section of the garage has its own theme. And this section is the dungeon slash Lich King section. So you walk in and you saw Jack Skellington incorporated him into this section. And you walk in and we've got the floating candles, Harry Potter style up there. Those will be lit up. And then over here, we have a collection of oddities that we've collected over the years. A couple of different things here, some potions and eyeballs, and, um, glasses and other things. A lot of these things light up, uh, so they look pretty cool when the lights are turned off. And um, <clears throat> we also have black lights. So all this netting here, the white netting lights up pretty well in the black lights. Some of this stuff here, the glow in the dark stuff or the neon, um, neon paint will glow in the black light. So it all looks pretty cool. Um, in the past, I've had these overhead lights these little lights underneath the cabinets on, but I think I'm gonna leave them off this year. And right here, we have the throne of the Lich King, and there's a little strobe light that lights them up. Now this skeleton is actually a black light skeleton, so when the black light reflects off of him, he actually glows in the dark, so it looks pretty cool. It's a cool effect. And we have little things here, some, uh, candles and a little hand there and he's surrounded by weapons and um, all sorts of cursed things and in the past we've had a skeleton set up um, with a with a circular saw on him and um, had added some noises there but this year we've made a little throne there and um, once you get past that section you're in the macabre seance section. We have a lot of skulls and ghosts. Um, and this is a little area with the, um, with the fortune teller's ball and the um, little mannequin dolls. This guy actually talks and um, this skull, the eyes light up and this book thing here moves. So this is all behind the scenes. I'm not going to actually play anything. I'm going to have a different video with the actual um, setup all put together and on and, and functioning. And this screen here is going to, it's a projector screen and it'll have a ghost or ghost going by and, and showing up. And I'm going to I'm putting a speaker behind the screen so the sound will be coming straight from where the ghost is. So it's a pretty cool effect here, something a little different when they come around the corner. I've also put up this netting at each of the corners. That'll slow the kids down so they don't run through everything and, and miss all the little things. And this area is called Murder Alley. And in Murder Alley, we have the girl who went missing in the sewers and we got a couple of neat surprises here. We've got um, some drop down mechanisms. The skeleton, uh, he comes down pretty, pretty quickly. So it's a, um, it's a cool effect. It's run by motion sensors right there. And we tested it out, works pretty well in the dark. We've also got a um, portrait here, which uh, is connected to a DVD player. And I've put all the equipment here in this cooler. Um, I think in the future, maybe I'll hook up some other 
uh, machinery or something to make the lid move. That might be a cool thing to do in the future. Um, different ideas. We've got our first big animatronic here. It's Pennywise who jumps out of the sewers and scares the kids. That's also motion activated. And a lot of this stuff we bought from stores like Spirit or Amazon, even the local Rite Aid, they always have stuff 50% off before Halloween. So it's hard not to go there and um, hard to go there and not to buy things. And uh, this big tapestry I ended up buying off of Amazon. It's really cool, it wasn't that expensive. And it actually uh, lights up with the black light. So when it's on, it, it looks pretty neat and kind of gives the space a little bit of depth. Um, right here we have the clown area. And when we first started this haunted houses, we had a lot of focus on um, clowns and circus stuff, because those are always scary for the kids. But we didn't have this progression. We had it kind of uh, closed off from the rest of the garage and the garage was open. So kids would walk in and they'd be in there for a little bit. But that got old very quickly once you do it one season. Um, kids know what to expect. So something a little different. And nothing's in this little circus tent here. Not sure what we'll do. Um, maybe if somebody volunteers and they want to scare other kids, that might be a good place to hide. And we have our big clown, this guy, I don't know his name, but he is also motion activated. And he um, makes some big movements and, and is pretty scary, pretty intimidating. Um, he's a little over six feet tall, so um, pretty cool. And I dressed him up in a cloak this time to make him look a little different, put a mask on him. So um, once you get through that section, you finish off in the Forbidden Forest. And this is where we have all our spiders and um, the kids and the wife took a lot of time decorating this area. Some tree branches and spider webs. We have a lot of um, spiders. We're not quite done with this area yet. Here we have a little jumping spider. Now this guy actually doesn't work. We bought him probably about 10 years ago and he stopped working correctly um, not long after we bought it but I like the jumping effect. It really does scare a bunch of kids. So we got another one this year that does work. And we also have another uh, drop down scare. And the thing with these drop down scares, and I didn't realize this until I was testing them out, you do have to add a little bit of weight on them. It says no more than three and a half pounds or something around there. And I would tend to agree uh, it can run off of either plugging it in or using AA batteries. There's four of them in there, but I would think that those AA batteries will run out pretty quickly and um, haven't tested how long these actually will, will work for, but um, if it's too heavy, there's a little winding mechanism and I can see it not functioning correctly. So this, this spider actually did not exceed the weight I had to add, you see right above it, I had to add um, some, there's this Allen wrench set that um, I just needed to add some weight. Most kids probably wouldn't even recognize what's above there, but they'll see the spider. Anyhow, we've got a bunch of bats up here, and uh, the last thing we're going to do is hang up this big spider thing we got over at Party City, and we'll hang them up right before you exit the Forbidden Forest. So anyhow, that's our haunted garage, maze, whatever you want to call it this year. And I'll have another video where everything will be fully running. I'll try and do it Halloween night when things calm down because uh, I do plan on buying some dry ice. So we'll get the fog, the rolling fog machine running and like I said, I mean, uh, we've collected this stuff, gosh, um, over the years, never done anything quite like this. So this will be our first year. A lot of kids in the neighborhood have already mentioned that they, they plan on stopping by. And since it'll be a little different this year, 
um, I think they're going to be in for a pleasant surprise. So I will post a video of everything fully functioning uh, sometime after Halloween. And this is just the behind the scenes. Hope you enjoy the video.